Senator Ted Cruz of Texas says the chaos and the crisis at the border are all by design to destroy the United States. Laura Ingram of Fox News points out the big lie being told by Biden and the White House today. The United Nations has been accused of funding Hamas's attack on Israel, and now several nations around the globe are pulling their funding until the United Nations can be investigated. Thank you so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out, so thank you so much. I also want to thank today's video sponsor, Aura, and I'll tell you more about them later. President Joe Biden issued an eerie message to reporters today after three U.S. troops were killed in the country of Jordan. Biden said that his mind has been made up, telling reporters he has decided how he will respond by stating the moment of no return is approaching. What the heck does that mean? Now, due to the nature of the Iran-backed attack, three dead, over 40 wounded, I expect Biden's retaliation will be much more extreme than any response we've seen thus far. Uh, I think we'll see multiple attacks over the coming weeks of Iran-backed militia and production labs. Uh, but we'll have to wait and see as the White House and the Pentagon are not going to reveal to the media exactly what their plans are. Now, this incident has forced the Pentagon to take a closer look at possible flaws in our defense. During a response to a reporter, Major General Patrick Ryder commented, to this point, those air defense systems have worked extremely well in terms of protecting our forces. We're taking a look at situations here and how this UAS, Unmanned Combat Aerial Vehicle, was able to strike this facility and kill and wound U.S. service members. Now, unfortunately, there have been over 150 attacks thus far, and I believe that's the main problem here. They are overwhelming the system and uh, basically attacking everywhere they can. Now, these attacks are because the United States continues to defend Israel, and so our men and women in uniform are taking the brunt of these revenge attacks. Now, regardless of what the negative impact of supporting Israel is, the United States has continued to stand by her ally. Just a few days ago, it was announced that the U.S. even paused aid to a major Palestinian humanitarian group, UNRWA, over allegations that some of their employees participated in the October 7th attack. While some have criticized America heavily for this action, Secretary of State Antony Blinken has already stated that funding will continue once certain conditions are met. Now, isn't that funny? They're like, why is America stopping funding this group? We just killed a bunch of people. Duh. Uh, hello, there's a reason why. Now, as a worldwide leader, America must maintain its perception of loyalty, and that starts within. However, Democrat Representative Elon Omar has reportedly ditched her oath and is no longer putting America first. During a speech to Somalia leaders in a hotel in Minneapolis, Minnesota, Representative Omar described herself as Somalian first and Muslim second and stated, the U.S. will do what we want, nothing else. They must follow our orders. This is how we safeguard the interests of Somalia. Now, Republican Representative Tom Omer did not like how Omer uh, Omar stated, uh, seemed to put Somalia before the United States and stated, Elon Omar's appalling Somalia first comments are a slap in the face to the Minnesotans who elected to, her, to serve them and a direct violation of her oath of office. She is uh, a disgrace and that she should resign. Now, uh, obviously she's from another country. It's okay to have uh, loyalty to your country, but when you put uh, Somalia before the interests of Americans, maybe you shouldn't be serving in public office for the United States of America. If you go that leaders seem concerned about everyone else's safety but our own, Rep uh, Republican Senator Ted Cruz of Texas has, has had enough. During a recent interview with Fox News, Senator Cruz blasted President Biden by stating the border crisis is the result of desire 
not incompetence. Uh, he said that uh, when Joe Biden became president, he inherited the lowest rate of illegal immigration in 40 years. He deliberately broke the system. He opened the border and the numbers immediately shot up. 9.6 million illegal immigrants have crossed into the country. Now, he's saying that this is all by design uh, and that Biden needs to be removed. But for now, he stands with Texas defending herself. Now, everyone is now becoming aware of this truth. The border crisis is clearly manufactured by Democrats. It's not a result of bad policy or anything else. Even Elon Musk has joined the fight by offering a complete solution to fix the crisis. He stated, no law needs to be passed. All that is needed is, is an executive order to require proof before granting an asylum hearing. That is how it used to be. Just so everyone is on the same page, it's really that simple. Biden should wake up tomorrow and sign some papers and the whole crisis would be over. But this isn't what they want. He wants to incentivize people to come illegally. It's very clear to all of us. Now, Biden said today he has no authority to defend the border, and this is Republicans' fault. Now, let me know in the comments down below. Is this true? Does a sitting president have no authority, even though it's his constitutional duty, to defend the borders of the United States? Or is he just lying? Well, Laura Ingram seems to believe he's lying. Laura Ingram of Fox News hammered Republicans for putting together a border deal with Democrats that makes Joe Biden look good while trusting and believing that he will actually keep his word once the bill is signed. Here's what she had to say. Now, it's a classic Senate theater of the absurd move with its own cast of characters, including the man cast by Mitch McConnell to be lead actor. That's Oklahoma Senator Jim Lankford. He's trying mightily to convince you that Biden will really enforce new laws under a new bill, even though he doesn't use the authority he already has. Now, under the leaked out language, Biden would not be compelled to act to close the border unless a threshold number of about 5,000 migrants have been logged in one day, which, by the way, has happened many times during the past month. She continues, Now, this argument makes no sense, because in the first place, even as the Washington Post on this subject made clear, even the 5,000 migrant cap isn't a real cap. Because even if the border was shut, were shut down, people could apply for asylum at ports of entry, so the border would never be shut down, no matter how high the number gets. And as for the idea that we can trust Biden or Mayorkas to implement pro-enforcement changes in asylum law, there is zero reason for us to believe that either of them would want this nonsense stopped. Unless, of course, ensuring that everyone meets the new standard if there was a new standard put in place. After all, 90% of all migrants right now do not qualify for asylum status. They just mouth the credible fear language and the regulation, uh, and, and then, they get, then they get into the country, right? So what she's pointing out is that Lankford is naive in believing that Mayorkas, who has destroyed the United States more than any single individual in a president's cabinet, is going to uphold this law. He doesn't uphold the laws that he has now. President Biden doesn't uphold the laws that he has now. He doesn't uphold or use the authority that he has now. Now, Breitbart News has just dropped a bombshell report claiming that a Ukrainian embassy spokesman told them that nearly 90% of funds granted to Ukraine's benefit American interest. What does this mean? As we all know, the prospect of war can be very appealing to powerful people because it's a great money maker. Even though it's incredibly immoral to push war for the purpose of enriching yourself. Now, the spokes, uh, spokesman stated that a large portion of the funds that are utilized in the United States for the construction of new weapons or the replenishment, those dispatched to key from U.S. reserves. Now, just as Ted Cruz alleged earlier, it's clear to me that this is all on purpose. 
there is no reason for us to be pushing for war to continue. Uh, now, here's, here's what this is basically saying is 90% of our money, the money that goes to Ukraine, the weapons, it doesn't actually go to Ukraine. It's going to special interest groups. It's going to our allies. It's going to the military industrial complex. We are all being scammed in a giant money laundering scheme. And this isn't coming from Stephen Gardner. This is coming from a top official in Ukraine saying, we're not even getting the money and weapons. America's saying that they're doing these things. Then they're giving the money and the weapons to special interest groups. All right, now, despite what I believe is a clear truth, most people will go through life without even thinking about it. But maybe thinking is the result of mental weakness. At least that's what Nikki Haley seems to imply today. While doing an interview with CBS News, Haley bashed Trump's mental fortitude by stating, it is a fact that when you are their age, you have mental decline. I don't care who you are, they have mental decline. He didn't get uh, just get me confused. He mentioned it over and over and over again. He's not what he was in 2016. He has declined, and that is a fact. So Nikki Haley is saying that Donald Trump is just as dumb and mentally incapable as Joe Biden, and that uh, MAGA voters and Republicans and independents should not vote for him. That, but, but she is the solution. She's the one that you should be voting for. Let me know in the comments, do you believe Donald Trump or do you believe Nikki Haley? I look forward to reading your answers. Now, before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. Thank you so much for supporting this channel. Make sure to hit that like button and the subscribe button. We're trying to get to 1.5 million amazing subscribers. Now, I'm going to leave these important videos. Please do not leave YouTube without watching them. Thank you so much, and I will see you on the next video.